So you know you need to import data into QuickBooks Desktop, but you're just wondering what you should use. So in this demonstration, we're going to have a detailed look at the QuickBooks Desktop import data options and compare that with a third-party import to utility called Z-Axis. In that, we're going to explore the advantages of each method and also the disadvantages so you get a better idea before you attempt your import what you should use. So the first way that you can import data built into QuickBooks Desktop is using the IIF file format import feature. So this can import lists and transaction and is a legacy format built by Intuit to import directly into QuickBooks. So to access it, go to the file menu, select utilities, import, and then the option for IIF files. Click on the import button and we'll browse to an IIF file that we've got to sample to import into QuickBooks desktop. And once that works, you'll now see a summary of what was imported. And if there were errors, you'll get an output of errors here where you can go through and adjust the data as you, see, as you need to. So this is a legacy format. It's been around for a long time. Many people support it, and it also supports many list and transaction types. But what people have found is it generally can be quite error prone, and it's very difficult to edit the IIF files if you do come across these types of errors. So it's quite a difficult format to use. So the second method to import is the Excel file import, which allows you to import from Excel files a list of customers, vendors, accounts, and items. So let's have a quick look at how that works. So I select File Menu, Utilities, Import, Excel Files. So when it prompts you here to add or edit multiple list entries, we're going to use the old traditional method. So we're going to say no to that. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to use the advanced import. And this is where you can browse to a file which contains your data. In this case, it's a customer list. You will open Excel and open the sheet. You do need to have Excel installed, so that's a requirement. Select the sheet that contains the data and we're going to add a new mapping. So this is just a case of adding a new import type as customer. So for this method, the supported list types, no, list types, no transactions, are customer, vendor, item, and account. So you come in here and you can begin the process of mapping in the various um, values for the import. So we can import company name and so on. And then once you've created that, you just give the mapping a name. Save. You can preview the data to make sure it's in the format you need. And you'll get a preview of the data that's going to be brought in. And you get a few more options about importing rows with errors or leaving them blank um, and so on. And you can just go ahead then and, hit and import those directly into QuickBooks. So that's how you would use the built-in import an Excel file feature within Axis. There are templates which you can load up, but they're quite restricted in the fields that you can provide and the format that the data's in. Um, so that's just the second way that you can import lists um, into QuickBooks Desktop. So that way has definitely has more flexible formats that can be imported rather than IF IIF files. It also has easier ways of editing the data within Excel, but it's really limited to the number of list types that can be imported and certainly no transactions. So there's some disadvantages with that. So the, th the third way to import data into QuickBooks Desktop is using the batch enter feature that is available in the higher, more expensive versions of QuickBooks. So let's have a look at that. So go to the company menu and select the option for 
batch enter transactions. Now that might be under the accountants menu if you're using a different SKU or a different version of QuickBooks. So this is in the enterprise version we're looking at at the moment. You'll then get this table option where you can select the transaction type that you want to import. So we've got checks, deposits, credit card charges, credits, bills and bill credits, invoices and credit memos. So you can also modify the number of columns that you have here. So you can add columns or you can remove them or you can change the order of them. So it does give you some flexibility around the importing of transaction data this way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select invoices and credit memos. Now, the next step in the process is to grab the data from an Excel sheet such as what we've got here. So it's very important that the columns all line up in the same order. So when we copy and paste from the Excel sheet, they're going to go into the right area. So we're just going to select the data like this. We're going to select copy. We're going to select the first cell up here and we'll then paste the data into that. So it's, you can see why it's important to have the correct rows um, lining up, I'm sorry, the correct columns lining up so that it fits well with what QuickBooks has here. Then once this is done, you can then save the transactions and um, it's going to add some additional detail in and then we'll begin the process of importing those in batch directly into QuickBooks desktop. So with that, you also have the option to do certain splits as well if you need to. So let's try that again. And we're going to do splits. And you can take the invoice and add split line detail in as well. So we can, you know, have additional functionality there. So this is quite a powerful way. But remember, it's only available in the uh, more expensive versions of QuickBooks. So we're looking at the enterprise version here and also the accountants edition as well. So that's the third way that you can import. So in summary, it has more flexible formats with transactions. It's easier to edit the data and to edit within Excel, but it's limited to the number of fields that can be imported. So if you're looking for things like custom fields or units of measure, or any advanced fields that are available in enterprise, then you'll have a trouble, trouble finding that. So those are our limitations um, within this method. So the fourth option for importing data is using a third party import utility. So in this example, we're going to look at import utility called Z axis that can import a whole range of transaction and list types into QuickBooks Desktop. So we'll open our QuickBooks Desktop and then connect the third party application to your QuickBooks Desktop company file. Within the import module, you browse to the file that you wish to upload into QuickBooks Desktop and the supported file formats include text Excel, tab delimited, um, IIF files, and so on. So it's quite a large range of different transactions that are supported. Next, you, you add apply a mapping, and this is one that's been created before, and I'll show you how that is done. So clicking on the edit button, we can see here the detailed column column mapping screen. So on the left hand side, you have QuickBooks and these are the columns in your import file. It also has the ability to add constants, it has the ability to add functions to translate values, to join fields together, or even to trim um, fields that are too long. So there's quite a lot of advanced functionality even within this mapping process, which can um, allow you to make your import smarter into QuickBooks. So we'll save that mapping. Um, it also has features here to skip it if the transaction already exists or override it or even append rows or lines to transactions. Um, it can use an order numbering feature as well as um, update address and contact details. So there's quite a lot in there when it comes to um, processing your data before it's actually then imported into QuickBooks. So by clicking on the import button 
Access will validate the data to make sure it's in the correct format and then begin a process of directly importing those into your QuickBooks company file. So you have the ability to view those transactions after they've been imported or even undo individual ones if you need to. Um, or if you want to roll back the entire import, you can select the undo all feature here. So I think you'll see that there's quite a extensive number of additional features or powerful features within third party applications that can um, do over and above what QuickBooks desktop can do. So there's good reason there why you should consider looking at these add on apps. Um, obviously, there is a fee involved, but um, you're paying for advanced functionality. So by using an import utility like Z-Axis, you get access to a lot more transaction types and list types are supported. For example, you might be wanting to import um, multi-currency transactions or transactions with inventory site or inventory adjustments. There are a whole range of additional transactions you won't find in QuickBooks. It also has the ability to powerful features like translating values, modifying or undoing. But that all comes with an additional cost, of course, but that could start from a one-time fee of just $195. So that's just some of the pros and cons of using an add-on tool. So in summary, what should you use when importing into QuickBooks? So if you have a basic need with simple Excel files with relatively straightforward data, then you're probably going to be okay with the built-in QuickBooks utilities. But if you're looking for something a little bit more advanced with more complex needs and more extensive fields of transaction lists, then an import utility would be something you should consider.